What's up guys, my name is Andrew. Today we're gonna to go over how to properly measure and install custom brake lines on your motorcycle. One thing I can tell you about working on bikes for over eight years now, is that you definitely do not wanna overlook your brake lines, especially on a vintage motorcycle that's 15, 20, 30 years old. What can happen to these brake lines is they can fail over time, <clears throat> which is not good at all. And so a great way to upgrade those is to go with stainless steel braided lines, which is what we've done here. Uh, we have our CB350 build right here with a GSXR front end conversion on it. And it's a complete custom setup. So what we did is we had to measure these so we can get them ordered and then we had to get them uh, installed. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to get those properly measured so you can get them ordered on lakemoto.com or go to any other website online and then also how to get them properly installed. And this applies to any custom build. So the first step in getting your measurements for your custom lines is to make sure that your front end is fully extended. So you need to jack up your motorcycle, make sure that the front tires off the ground so you know that this is, especially is fully traveled. Um, that way you know that you're not gonna get uh, too short of a line if you go over um, a bump or something like that and your bike extends out, that's gonna stretch your lines or potentially break them and damage them. So the first thing you need to do is get it jacked up. And if you don't have an easy way to jack up the front of your bike to get the tire completely off the ground, uh, make sure you give it at least a good inch or so um, or, you know, try to pull the bike back or kick it up on the stand or something to get it as close as extended as possible. All right, guys, so the next step is to figure out your configuration or your layout of how your brake lines want to go. So there's two different ways we can do it on this particular setup. It's a dual uh, rotor setup. So we could do um, two separate lines, two long lines that go all the way up um, from the calipers um, directly into the master cylinder, um, your lever. Um, or we can go two shorter lines, actually it'll be three lines total, but two shorter lines from one on the left and one on the right caliper, uh, meet up into a T-fitting right here, and then a shorter line going from the T-fitting up into your, um, your master cylinder. Um, what we decided to do is go that route. Um, we intentionally left this, uh, this mounting hole right here um, unpainted, so we can go ahead and do that. And so what we wanna do is get measurements from each side of the calipers up to this, uh, this T fitting right here that we're gonna be having. And the best way to do that is just get some wire. This is a 16 gauge strand of wire. Um, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just wrap that around your banjo bolt that goes into the caliper itself. Just give that a few wraps around there. And then you're gonna do that for both sides and then uh, give yourself a uh, decent amount of line so you're not too short. We're gonna do that on both sides and uh, get them screwed in there and then we can get our measurements. All right, now that we got both of the wires connected to the banjo bolt onto the caliper, um, grab yourself a Sharpie or some kind of marker um, that you can use to go ahead and mark um, the location that you need to measure from. So now that the suspension is fully extended, we know this is as long as it's ever gonna be. Um, you want to go give it a little bit of slack, um, half inch or so, and kind of um, get it close to where the T-fitting is going to be. Um, this particular line is going to be approximately right here. Just make sure that it kind of naturally, naturally stays where you want it to go, and then mark your line. We'll do that for the other side. You run it, run it to where you want it to go. Right there. All right, now that you got your, your lines marked, uh, next what you wanna do is you wanna get measurements on those lines. So we're gonna measure the short one first. If you look at the Venn Hill website, um, they'll show you how they use the measurements um, and how they do it is it's behind the banjo fitting. Um, that's the measurement that they need, so that's what we're gonna measure here. Um, this one looks like it's eight and a half. All 
All right, now that we have our measurements, it's time to get them ordered. Head over to lakemoto.com or any other brake line provider online. And make sure you order the right length and banjo fitting orientation. Also make sure you get crush washers and banjo bolts if needed for the job. All right, we got our custom lines ready to go. If you guys are interested in on making your own lines from bulk hose and your own fittings and everything, let me know in the comments and we can make a separate video on that. Um, we got ours ready to go. Um, one thing to know is to not put the crusher, crush washers on just yet. Make sure you get everything test fit um, before you do that. And that's going to be the last step is uh, putting your crush washers on your banjo bolts. All right, let's get them fit up and see how they look. Get everything kind of positioned. Um, before you tighten everything up, obviously put your crush washers back on, um, all your banjo bolts. And then once everything's tight, you want to make sure nothing's going to rub. So you want to make sure it's going to clear um, your forks, um, turn the handlebars all the way to both sides, make sure nothing's going to rub right here. And um, you just don't want anything to rub. What it could do is cause a pinhole in your brake lines and you could lose your brakes, which would be horrible. You don't want that to happen. So make sure that nothing is going to interfere with the brake line or rubbing with any vibration. And uh, at that point, um, torque everything down. Um, look at the torque specs for each brake line and make sure that you're uh, torquing the banjo bolts down appropriately. And then um, once you're happy with the install, uh, the next step is to bleed the brakes. We'll do that in a separate video. All right, guys, the brakes are completed and they turn out awesome. Subscribe as we continue the CB350 build series. Stay tuned, our next video will be on how to set up a clean wiring system with modern components.